Welcome back to AM Northwest. You know, today's workplace is more inclusive and authentic, and that's especially true when it comes to executive presence. Here to share what that is and how we can cultivate a powerful presence, we welcome back executive coach and personal brand strategist, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh. How you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Good. Okay, so let's talk about what is executive presence. Yeah, well, it's interesting because it's really a subjective term, but fundamentally is how you act, speak, and look in order to influence, right? So we talk about communication, charisma, confidence, right, and your communication skills, the ability to do that in order to influence. And the challenge with it is that it's so, it's so subjective. It's it's the it's the presence you have when you walk in the room. They use the term je ne sais quoi, yeah. you know, people have. Um, and so because of that, for a long time, it's really been homogenized in terms of what that looks like, right? It's in the eye of the beholder, so to speak, in terms of how you are showing up. And so in, in some ways, it's been weaponized against other people trying to be more authentic in the past. And so today, though, if you're not able to show up authentically, you're not going to communicate effectively. You're not going to have charisma. You're not going to have the confidence to show up in the way that makes sense for you if you're not able to do it in a way that's authentic. So we've kind of moved away from this, you know, power dressing, homogeneous one way of showing up and having presence to really being more inclusive of allowing individuals to really let their authenticity show up. You talk about brand and how that's important. Absolutely. The first thing you want to do is get clear on what is your brand, right? Because that is what's going to help you to show up confidently. And when you are aligned with your values, when you know your skills, when you know what you can bring to the table, it's going to help you become more confident and to communicate effectively and to show up with influence. So the first thing you want to do is really figure out what is your authentic brand, because that's going to be the key foundation to your executive presence. Okay, and then you also about, talk about cul cultivating emotional intelligence. Yes, you know, most people think they're aware, but there's a study that actually about 10 to 15% of people actually are self-aware about how they show up. So you want to think about how do you handle polarities? How do you handle conflict? How do you handle adversity? How are you able to influence and manage a group of people and be able to move them from one place to the other or launch a product or launch a service and get people behind it, right? So you want to be aware of how you're showing up and how you're managing your emotions because that plays a key component into your communication skills and your ability to influence. Uh, you also mentioned too in that same uh, discussion it's about being able to adapt to change. Absolutely. You have to be adaptable, right? If any, if nothing else post-COVID that we've learned that yeah. you have to be able to be resilient and adaptable. So how you handle change and how you handle uncertainty is going to be huge because, yeah. like I said, it goes to that key aspect of can you lead, can you influence, can you get people to really follow you and trust you. All right. And then align with your visual brand. Yeah, so part of your brand is also how you show up visually, right? We take in everything that we take in, about 93% of the things we take in, we do so visually. So sometimes people say, oh, I'm strong and powerful, but when they show up in terms of their image or what they're wearing or how they look, you just don't see that same level of power. So you want to make sure that your brand is aligned visually so that you understand your image, that you understand how to leverage your wardrobe, how to communicate that power, that je ne sais quoi, if you will, through what you're wearing. And engage in self-evaluation too. Yeah, absolutely. The best way to improve is to get feedback. So you want to engage in a self-reflective practice to ask yourself, you know, what worked well, what didn't work well? How did I show up in that meeting? What could I change or things that I would maybe do differently? And one of the great tools that you can utilize for that is taking a 360. Some people are hesitant about having a 360 because you're soliciting feedback from your supervisor, from your peers, from people that maybe even report to you, but it's gonna give you that critical information to know how you need to make some improvements so that you're aligned with your brand, that you're aligned visually, and to really increase that level of self-awareness so that you can have resilience and the ability to really make an impact in your workplace. Well, and I would think that you would, you would want to ask uh, opinions from trusted colleagues. You do want to ask opinions from trusted colleagues. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you want to ask opinions from people 
that you may not know well oh. to give you really objective feedback. I see because what you're saying. Because sometimes people who really are close to you are going to say, oh, you're amazing. Right, that's true. You may not get the feedback that you need. Now, you don't want to ask haters. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> but, but you do want to have a breadth of people that you can go to that you know are going to give you legitimate, honest feedback so that you know the areas in which that you can make improve, improvements on. Yeah, all great stuff. Dr. Carol Parker-Walsh, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, we'll be right back.